In transition metals, for example, metallic ferromagnets, we find that the, uh, the source of ferromagnetism is primarily due to the uh, free electrons, uh, not the localized uh, moments in the lattice. So we need to talk about the band theory of uh, ferromagnets. So, uh, so let's see uh, what are the problems that we cannot explain using the localized moment theory. Uh, the first thing to note is that in uh, metallic uh, ferromagnets, for example, the transition metals such as iron, cobalt, and nickel, the magnetic properties. are uh, primarily, because there is a contribution from localized moments as well, are primarily due to uh, conduction electrons and uh, the exchange interaction between these electrons we call itinerant exchange. So we talk about itinerant exchange between these electrons. And the thing that the localized moment theory cannot explain is the fact that when we uh, measure the magnetic moment per atom, we find that it is a non-integer quantity. So the localized, purely localized moment picture uh, cannot explain this phenomenon. The localized moment theory cannot explain a non-integer magnetic moment per atom and also according to uh, Weiss theory uh, the magnetic moment per atom must be the same when it's a ferromagnet or it's a paramagnet so depending on the phase the magnetic moment per atom does not change so according to Weiss theory, which is based on the Langevin picture of localized moments, uh, the magnetic moment per atom should be the same in both uh, ferro and para magnetic phases which is not the case so here is a schematic illustration uh, for for example this can be uh, used for d bands so we have uh, the energy bands formed by uh, the uh, electrons and uh, these, uh, you can see the energy as a function of uh, density of states here. And spin up and spin down bands normally uh, should have degeneracy, but uh, there is the exchange interaction between the electrons that causes the uh, splitting of these bands. And you see that there is a split of bands of the amount mu0, mu b times hx. So mu b is the Bohr magneton magnetic moment due to spin times the exchange uh, magnetic field Hx uh, causes this splitting in the uh, spin subbands so for up spins and down spins so uh, we have a few observations about this uh, picture uh, 
the first observation is that number one if we have a completely filled energy band this cannot contribute to a magnetic moment because all spins will be paired up so up spins number of up spins and number of down spins will be the same the total uh, spin angular momentum uh, quantum number will be zero and l will be zero as well so a completely filled energy band does not contribute to uh, magnetism now if we have a partially filled band as you can see in the illustration in a partially filled band uh, the exchange energy that we talked about in the case of helium for example uh, the exchange energy will lift the degeneracy of the spin sub bands spin up and down sub bands and number three the occupancy of one spin uh, band before the other can give uh, rise to non-integer -integ uh, number of moments per atom the occupancy of one spin subband before the other can give rise to non-integer moment per atom so we're going to uh, illustrate these ideas with an example so let's say that we have uh, 10 electron states provided by 10 atoms each donating a one electron uh, to the band and we're going to place these electrons now uh, in the in these states provided by these 10 atoms so uh, we start placing the electrons uh, from the lowest possible energy so here is number one number two number three number four number five number six number seven number eight number nine and number ten and as you can see with no exchange uh, interaction between these electrons i have e equal number of spin up and spin down electrons they're all paired up so uh, in this case the magnetic moment uh, per atom would be zero because i have all electrons uh, paired up now i turn on uh, exchange interaction so let's uh, turn on exchange interaction when i do that uh, these uh, spin sub bands are split by a certain amount the exchange energy the exchange energy is a uh, mu zero Bohr magneton exchange field H exchange and the exchange field is pointing down so that um, it will be the lower energy state would correspond to a magnetic moment pointing down which means spin electron spin is pointing up so you can see that the uh, spin up uh, sub band uh, energy levels have shifted down so now i start filling these energy bands uh, with uh, these states with 10 electrons so here is number one number two three four five 
six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now let's see what happens. I have one, two, three, four, five, six up spins and four down spins. So if I calculate the total moment for this configuration, total uh, moment would be uh, from uh, six up spins, I have a contribution of six bore magnetons and for from four down spins I have a contribution of four bore magnetons so the net moment is two bore magnetons uh, since the the net moment is due to up spins it's pointing down so this is a down uh, moment or if you wish we can say it is minus two bore magnetons uh, so the number of atoms was 10 therefore the magnetic moment mu per atom would be equal to 2 divided by 10 Bohr magnetons so this would uh, correspond to 0 0.2 uh, Bohr magnetons So this is an important result and basically it shows me that it is possible to have a non-integer value of Bohr magnetons per atom. So um, my basically localized moment theory which cannot explain the non-integer magnetic moment per atom is replaced by the band theory that can explain the non-integer value of magnetic moment uh, per atom. Now there is a remark here this itinerant exchange interaction the exchange interaction between these conduction electrons is also due to Hund's rules and the idea is to maximize spin to minimize Coulomb energy so uh, the occupancy of the bands uh, basically is such that we want to maximize the spin so that we have less overlap of the electron wave functions and Coulomb energy is minimized. So again, the itinerant itinerant exchange interaction is due to Hans rules or let's say due to Pauli exclusion uh, principle and basically maximize spin to minimize Coulomb energy so the electrostatic energy is minimized by doing so. So this exchange interaction is there to minimize the uh, Coulomb energy. So uh, let's, let's see what we talked about. So in metallic ferromagnets where we have conduction electrons, the contribution from the conduction electrons is uh, dominant over the localized moments. So the magnetism so that's called the interaction uh, of the conduction electrons between themselves is called itinerant exchange uh, the localized moment theory cannot explain the non-integer magnetic moment values per atom and uh, the value of the magnetic moment per atom should be the same for paramagnetic and ferromagnetic phases according to Weiss theory so if we have for example, D bands represented like this in this schematic illustration. Normally, the spin sub bands, uh, up spin and down spin sub bands, should be the same, but uh, the, the degeneracy of these spin sub bands is lifted by exchange interaction so that uh, there is a splitting uh, with the amount of E exchange, which is mu zero mu B H exchange, exchange field. Uh, and 
you can see that if I fill, uh, if I have the, these two subbands completely filled, then all the spin up uh, electrons would be paired with spin down electrons, total spin would be zero, as well as the total uh, orbital angular momentum, L is zero, uh, just as in the case of localized moments. And then I would have uh, no contribution from uh, these electrons. Uh, to the magnetic moments per atom. If I have a partially filled band, uh, the exchange energy lifts the degeneracy of spin up and spin down bands, and the occupancy of one spin sub band before the other can lead to um, non integer values of magnetic moment per atom, or incomplete filling of uh, these energy levels uh, leads to uh, a non integer possibly a non-integer value of magnetic moment per atom. And we have shown it for an example when we have 10 electron states provided by 10 atoms. At the beginning, the exchange field was uh, zero. So I have assumed that there is no exchange interaction, there is degeneracy, and these uh, 10 electrons would have five spin up and five spin down with no magnetic moment per atom. Total S would be zero in this case. If I turn on the exchange interaction, uh, then I see that there is a splitting of these uh, energy of these states. And I can see that when I start filling from the lower energy to uh, higher energy levels, there will be six spin up and four spin down electrons when the exchange field is pointing down. And therefore, uh, I will have a net moment of two Bohr magnetons pointing down because I, it's due to upspins and that means 0.2 Bohr magnetons per atom. So this itinerant exchange interaction is also due to Pauli exclusion principle and the idea is to minimize the overlap of electron wave functions um, to, to minimize Coulomb energy. So the electrostatic interaction between the electrons uh, dominates this process.